What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. Dead Meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. And I'm James, and we're married, and we like to get scared together. Yeah, and being newly married, why not review a movie <laughs> that's about a weird marriage and is just really kind of a giant bummer? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, The Night House. The Night House. Is it a house you go to at night, or is it a house where it's always night is it a house where knights live also known as a castle yeah it's not it's not it's a uh, well what i guess should, are we gonna do the the spoiler free yeah part we and gotta then, all right because there i'm sure there are people tuning in who haven't seen it yeah, and are like should maybe i should should i watch it should yeah I not? especially because this is a newer one well it, it premiered at sundance in january 2020 because yes. i remember seeing previews for this like in the before times and then COVID happened and fucked up the release and so it didn't have a theatrical release until late last year or mid last year that sounds right because when i was looking this up again i saw it was like the night house 2020 and i was like no fucking way yeah you know like by my dating conventions that for instance i use in the kill count it would be 2020 because it's when it premieres and it did premiere at sundance in 2020 yeah uh but it if did, yeah if we happen to do our possible idea of dead meat awards for 2021 horror movies i would still call this eligible just because it had its wide release in 2021 and that's when most people saw it i would say yeah, I think that makes sense. Right? You know, we can it, fuck It did those. make me feel better, though, to realize, okay, no, I do remember this coming out widely in 2021. Yes. Time doesn't go by that fast. No, no, no. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, it is, you know, th this movie was kind of hyped. Um, I think a lot of uh, critics liked it. I actually found a stark contrast between critic and audience reception yeah on like metacritic rotten yeah. tomatoes mm -hmm. uh whatnot this is definitely what i would uh what the new scream would call elevated horror uh this is extremely it's funny that <laughs> like that phrase was a, a fairly derided kind of oh for sure thing but I also it, yeah. now as like a tr or like not using it legitimately but when you now when you say elevated horror you know exactly what you're talking about and i hate that that's the only thing i can think of to describe this weird subgenre is this like shitty name for it but also yeah it's you know movies that uh all movies uh, to some degree have uh, symbolism and extra meaning behind it and especially horror that's been prominent from the very beginning but you know in the past five or so years there has been a, a an increase in movies that focus more on that kind of metaphorical symbolism i i mean the the term came to prominence with get out i would say yeah and and hereditary hereditary and has been applied to all the ari aster robert eggers those types of movies uh this definitely falls in line with the babadook uh you know it, it's the, the movies lodge. yes the lodge uh i haven't seen antlers so i don't know if it's I don't Consi know. If, no? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Okay. But like yeah. St. Maud, I think, also. Does that sure, follow? which I, still I also haven't see seen. That. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is one of those movies. Um, it is a little bit of a slow burn, but a fantastic acting, fantastic cinematography, uh, just a very well made movie with some solid scares to it. There yeah, were two or three sound times. Design in this movie. Great sound design. Just technically mwah, beautiful movie. Yeah. Uh, the story and. Uh, conclusion i would say is divisive i think i actually ended up liking this maybe more than you uh, i think you might have liked it more than me I, honestly the more i read about it the more i like it because uh, we'll get into it but i think a lot of people thought that the first two-thirds of the film were great and that the last act kind of let them down i can totally see that that's kind of where i'm at yeah and i i felt a little bit of that watching it but then immediately after it ended i started to think about it more and I started to like it more, and then I started to read more about people's takes on it, and it's, it's just made me like it more and more. Um, I but, mean, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll feel more like you do once we talk about it. Yeah, so um, 
check that out if it seems interesting to you. But it is a bummer uh, <laughs> yes. on a number of levels. Yeah. I mean, the plot, this isn't a spoiler because it's the plot. It is uh, Rebecca Hall is playing a widow whose husband recently took his life. Yeah. And that sucks to deal with. But then also I would say the metaphor and deeper meaning of the movie itself also uh, teeters on some dark uh very almost nihilistic atheistic stuff yeah it's there's it's a lot it's heavy and depending on your interpretation is it like mental illness could I be a thing well i mean it could be it could be we'll i talk about i it. have a very specific reading of the end i sure. think but uh we'll but you know depressed people just be aware. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this isn't a Happy Sunshine's horror movie. No, it's not it's not a fun horror movie. I mean it it's fun in that it's genuinely scary. I will say if you're like, "Oh man, this is this seems like such a boring art house whatever." No, it's yes, it's very art artsy, but But it's not boring. No, and there's I was genuinely kind of I was very tense the entire time. I mean, I don't <laughs> Rebecca Hall. I mean, Rebecca Hall is amazing at everything. She she is in all of this movie, and just looking at her, I'm not bored. She's just carrying this movie. Yeah. It's, <laughs> this movie, like, I wonder how much, if, if you just read this script. I mean, granted, I guess you could say that about any movie where the performance is really good. So maybe this is a stupid point. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but, like, is her performance so good that it kind of I don't know because I think the story is what I'm like eh, on I think it's also shot fantastic. well yeah that's true it like I think really, everything really about it is amazing except maybe you might find the story and the resolution a little unsatisfying I think it, but I do think her acting is like the the thing to hang everything else on I think it starts to maybe get too clever is my problem with it hmm. the final kind of reveal is sure. a little bit like I see what you did there kind of yeah and it may have been you know it, it almost feels like I don't I'm not saying it was this but it almost feels like a studio being like can we can we just explain what's happening explain here Explain what exactly is happening here yeah to be fair halfway through my notes I wrote what is happening here <laughs> <laughs> so there you go so, so did a studio exec and I then wanted they... to know and honestly I don't know if that was a good idea I don't know if it, it should have ever. Told I us. totally understand that disappointment. I think that the variety of interpretations that I've entertained after finishing this movie makes it fine with me. Yeah, let's let's do let's, let's get do into spoilers. It. I hate dancing around. Yeah, this so case. go watch it. You know, uh, it, or, it's worth your time. It genuinely, a few sure. moments scared the shit out of me. So and it's actually one of those movies where it could have been a little longer, maybe. Hmm. Uh, maybe. Interesting. I, I didn't feel like it was too long. No, I think it's... Because I think, what, it's like 110? Yeah, it's, it's not like a 90-minute uh, in and out. Yeah. It's got some time to it, and it uh, I think If you want to just it. feel really on edge and, like, not <laughs> safe at all with your main character, watch this movie. Do you know what I mean? She just... She's, like, about to fucking snap this That's whole the, movie. Yeah, and so she's what, uncomfortable to be around and I that I like that about it exactly I saw uh someone online you know just say they complained that she wasn't likable I'm like no, I don't think she needs I think to it's be. perfect and yeah. she, she's not unlikable to me she's traumatized so yeah. like she has gone th like she is that weird like if you've ever um been on either end of like like if you've ever had something really really bad happen to you or you are close to someone where someone something really bad has happened to them you know that after the initial, like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Then there's the weird, like, being around this person is weird and hard because they're not my friend that I'm used to anymore. They've gone through some shit, and it's like, when am I going to get my normal friend or loved one back, and when can we just... Do you know what I mean? It's something where they're still dealing with it, and you understand that, but there's nothing else that you can do exact, at that point. Exactly, that frustration of there's not much else I can do except be there, but them being there, sucks. we're all human, it sucks. Yeah. It's hard, and it's not fun, and it's not 
pretty and I I think no I think she has to be like that the scene in the bar is like what yes with her friends yeah. for sure there there's so much like <laughs> her face in that scene is like yeah. just this uh this veneer of a smile that's just like oh yeah we want to talk about this yeah <laughs> it's like so when good. you're when you're friend makes a joke about something fucked up that happened to them and you don't feel like you're allowed to laugh at it and it's really weird and it's just uncomfortable and no one knows what to do after that moment yeah the tension in that scene I like is that great. scene is maybe my favorite i also like uh she's a high school teacher that's my other favorite scene and yeah, yeah. a parent of a, a a student comes in and complains about the c that my her son, son got. hunter got a c i love that it's hunter H- and that one of three hunters that she has yeah definitely if hunter or aiden she yeah could I was have gonna said. Say aiden brayden yeah yeah for sure you're all Ma- great mason maybe is a pretty popular name. sure mm-hmm. yeah and then of course like she saw the web uh she saw the grade online on like the the grade tracking thing and came in to complain about it and, and then beth is just like my husband shot himself yeah two weeks ago and oh do you want to be here i'll give your kid a fucking b yeah oh you want a oh no you want to be okay it's a fucking b i love that i just love that peek into her mental state yeah well when we get, we're gonna go through the movie i think well i want to revisit that soon because there's other little things there too that start getting into i don't want to ruin it anyway we're in the spoiler zone now get out of here if you haven't <laughs> seen it we open on her house not the night house it's just her house that she lives in which yeah, it's the day house this house immediately has vibes of dead spouse or kid in a movie well, like a rival it's the Do you remember it's... the house in that movie with the no. amy adams movie where she talks to the aliens. i know the movie i don't remember the house she lives in a house that literally is this house oh, okay. it, it just is sad looking well it's also just the way it's shot and <laughs> yeah. like the place setting shots and the opening credits it's like it, it go the movie goes so long without dialogue spelling out that her husband is dead i like yeah this this movie uh is a good example of how to write exposition in terms of what's happened to your character, why are they where they are, how are they related to people around them. It does a really good job. It's not like, you know this friend that my husband did this yesterday. It just... It, it just, it lets you put pieces together. By the time she tells that teacher, my husband, it's like, you already know. And exactly. that's the first time that she says it. Yeah. But just because of the way it's shot, uh, you already know. And on the note of the, the writing and the acting, everyone feels so real. It's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone just feels like such complex, real characters. And I love it. Yeah. I like how much of a contrast her friend is to her. Her friend is like... Claire? Yeah. Her friend definitely has like an all white house with like a farm kitchen yeah and stuff with words on it and it's like a millennial wine mom like that kind of energy coming off of her which is such a funny contrast to the main character yeah her friend is uh the character's name is claire she's played by sarah goldberg who's from uh barry Barry, yeah yeah. she's like the main uh the female lead in barry and yeah her claire definitely seems like just a people pleasing type person um, she's a she's a teacher also. She's a fellow teacher, yeah. These and two are hot teachers. It's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, oh boy. So, <clears throat> but yeah, this house that she lives in is her her husband designed it. Yeah, he's he like her it. husband. Did he build it or he is was he literally building it? Oh, with that's his right. Giant we do biceps. see. Yeah, okay, we do see home video. You're right. He did actually build it. Okay. Yeah. But it's this very uh like airy modern lake house yeah it's modern in the way that i like i typically don't love modern houses but this is like so beautiful was the house in lucky kind of like this lucky oh lucky uh no oh i feel like that's like a craftsman maybe i'm not remembering right oh okay i just remember big windows this house has very house large has windows. windows everywhere it's like in another rebecca hall movie the gift Oof. which makes use of a similar house so well every scene you you just want to die because they're in this house with these giant glass windows in the middle of the woods and just every shot you're looking out and waiting for someone or something to be out there it's the gift is Ugh. fucking great. The gift is crazy. Though. That is my reference point for Rebecca Hall. Uh, Same. She had very short hair then, yeah, like you once did. Mm-hmm. And this, she has longer hair, like you do now. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's gorgeous both ways, just like you. Thank you. <laughs> I know her from the Prestige. 
Oh, yeah. I think that was like her first movie. I mean, she's just like dead wife in that. Mm -hmm. She dies in a giant uh, fish tank thing. She's British, right? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you talking? I don't know. That's my... my... Well, she's British. <laughs> <laughs> her accent comes out just a, a, a line. Yeah, she... Oh, God, there. what was the word? Oh, I wrote it down. It... I wrote it down. Uh, it, it was like posthumous privacy. Yeah, posthumous. <laughs> yeah, I get a little bit of the accent. Oh, yeah. Posthumous sense of privacy. Privacy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but most of the time no I, it's solid She's, yeah it, and also i don't care it's I don't like care. whatever i feel like whenever that happens unless it's something where a character has to be as like if if she like has to be american for some reason i'm just like whatever maybe she has like a british parent maybe she spent I a semester she went in the abroad UK, yeah. she's like madonna <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right yeah yeah right Ma madonna's from detroit everybody don't yeah. forget. So is a character here in the yes, movie. Yes, and one of the actors in this is from Detroit. Oh, yeah, well. Mel. Mel is from Detroit. Yeah, Detroit's yeah. own. Yeah, the, one of the very first lines in here is someone saying, I fly back to Detroit tonight. And we're just like, we're yeah, like yeah, 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 at the beginning of this sad fucking movie where this woman's coming home from her husband's funeral. We're like, Detroit. Yeah, yeah D-Town. Uh, I like that when she comes home, her friend's clearly given her. I can't tell if it's like. We never see that character again. It's just like a person. Yeah. It might be her parent. Uh, or his parent, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. But I like that we see that this other character's given her a, a glass, like, casserole dish and with food in it. She immediately just dumps it in the trash. But then later... <laughs> later, she's, she's, eating. she's eating it. So you know that she went a few hours and was like... No, I just dug it out of the trash, which I think is such a, a after great some uh, not wine. What was she drinking? Brandy. brandy? Yeah. yeah, she's getting drunk watching wedding uh, videos that feature this folk rock song that would that is going to uh, repeat itself throughout the movie. It's a really great song. I almost sent it to you because I was just listening to it downstairs on YouTube on its own. Uh, I forgot the name. Who just played it really loud on the house speakers, like in this movie? Yeah, that would have scared me so much. It reminds me of Your Next, where the neighbor's house has that song that yeah. just plays. I love it when movies have a song that is it becomes just a motif. Annihilation does that with that uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash yeah. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's, love that. Song. It's so good, especially songs like that where they just have this feel to them. That I don't know, otherworldly, other timely. Yeah, uh, it's great. By the way, already the setup of this, I'm like, why is this white noise? This movie. <laughs> why is this a kind of remake of white? It's noise? It's kind of a remake of white noise. <laughs> I mean, like as it goes on, clearly they diverge, but the setup Ooh. of this is so like we've got architect spouse and beautiful open I didn't concept even think about the architect yeah, part dude. of it and a, this beautiful like glassy open concept house on a lake like i mean she literally gets a call from him yeah, and there's and it's, white noise and there's like a ghost voice in the and the static he, yeah and, and she's trying to contact him and then you and know she's watching the camcorder videos of her hot dead spouse and she's reminded of her hot dead spouse's hot ass i literally wrote do not ever forget this ass in such big letters because it happens she this. looks out the window and her dead husband's standing there with naked with his really juicy ass really juicy ass just fucking just being like oh yeah remember this just, yeah just straight up apple bottom but <laughs> just but then at the end it is like white noise because the entity that she thinks a, is her husband is demon. not. Holy shit, you're right. This dude. movie's fucking white noise. David Bruckner, we have questions. David Bruckner's the director. He did not write this. No, it was written by Ben Collins and Luke Piotrowski. Uh, Bruckner comes from the VHS gang. Yes. Bruckner um, co wrote and directed Amateur Night, which I would say is the breakout segment of VHS. Is that the one with the. the they bring that chick to their hotel yep, room yeah that's the that's one with the, the succubus it's the best one. for sure that's the one that you remember the most they they made a movie uh, oh i didn't know that he didn't direct it's called or, siren right yes the, a feature length i don't know how it was but he was like or, a producer on it yeah siren. yeah uh -huh. and then he also yeah did uh the signal but interesting thing about david bruckner is oh he did the ritual the most ritual, recently yes which was also a solid beautiful looking movie i remember um i had similar feelings about that one too where i was like i loved all the place setting and mm -hmm. then ultimately where it went i was like yeah 
Yeah, I would rewatch it just to Good see how I feel about design. it. But the interesting thing about him and these writers is that they are doing the next Hellraiser movie. Yes. Which that makes me feel good because apparently this movie came from an early draft of Hellraiser from Ooh, these guys. Okay. And I literally wrote in my notes when she finds the doll, I wrote, this thing looks like a maquette from a Hellraiser pre-production session. It does. So It feels I, very Clive Barker. It does. And so I like that there are already some elements of the Hellraiser flavor in this movie that's so, completely unlike it. And then they're going to be making Hellraiser next. So there's the movie and yeah. there's also that show. Yes. And the show with, with Michael Doherty uh, attached. Doherty, yes. yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can't just call him Mike on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but that, okay. Yes, that, okay. Lots of Hellraiser content. Yeah. And you know what? For both all of you them, freaks out there. <laughs> both of them I'm kind of excited about, unlike this new Texas Chainsaw that's coming out later this month. I haven't even watched this trailer. I can't bring myself to. You don't want to see Leatherface getting canceled, bro? Okay, that is like the funniest thing I've ever heard. Uh, I thought people were joking. But all, honestly, whatever. It's... Nothing sacred anymore. Man. Let's cancel other phase. I mean, that series is a mess anyway. And that's so a, like that's it, the I messiest. Guess. It's weird. I love tech like obviously Texas Chainsaw is my heart, but that series I don't really give a fuck about because it just is so whatever, man. Anyway, anyway. I haven't watched that trailer yet because I just too much discourse. I gotta wait till Twitter <laughs> is not It'll be out soon enough. Talking we'll, about we'll it anymore. It. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, she, you know, has has the, she's a teacher, she tries going back to work, it doesn't really work well, you know, when your spouse just died. Yeah, and everyone, it's that thing again where it's like people don't know how to act around you, mm -hmm. and yeah, she starts basically right away, she's having weird kind of visions and stuff at night where she falls asleep, maybe, it's all very... She keeps waking ambiguous. up in different places than she uh, fell asleep. She yeah. also starts to go through her late husband's stuff. Yeah. And that's when she finds that Cardoia. 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 Yeah, it's like a book about, I don't know, spooky maces. Yes, it gets a little house of leaves in here. Yeah, men spooky mental haunted houses, as the kids have been saying on Twitter. Have you been following that? Never mind. People who are too online will know what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, lots of House of Leaves <laughs> vibes. Because her husband designed and built this house, uh, and then she starts to find some notes of him, like, his his designs for a weird maze house, talking about, like, trapping something. Yeah, and, like, there's I... occult stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I, I definitely thought of House of Leaves, which is a book I love and is... Amazing. I'm shocked... No one's tried to make it into a movie yet. I feel like it's coming. Yeah? I feel like it's going to I was literally thinking earlier that if it was going to be made into a movie, it would have happened already. I feel like we've crested the mm. the wave of when people would have been like pumped for a House of Leaves movie. Maybe. I could see Benson and Moorhead doing a cool House of Leaves. Did the Endless? Yeah, the Endless. Mm -hmm. And a uh, few other mindfucky kind of yeah. cerebral My movies. Flanagan... I feel like could do a cool House of Leaves. Aster probably could. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. like there's plenty of, I think, directors who now I think would figure out a way to adapt it. Granted, it would be really difficult. Or what could be cool is if you get, if you make it um, collaborative because Ooh, that the layers. story has so many like nests of stories that it would be cool to have like very different styles. That'd be and they, dope. And you cut back and forth between them. That would match the different styles of the uh, prose in the book. Right, because they, it's all, it, that book is weird because it's, it's a book made of a bunch of different like, so, like fake source materials that all come together to form a cohesive story. Man, you could even do something where with the extensive footnotes could be cutaways to like a documentary a documentary yeah. Foot yeah yeah oh wow i know i mean hey let's see how this first movie goes <laughs> yeah then we'll just jump right then into we'll just call adapting it house again of and aster and make house of leaves yeah we'll adapt to the unadaptable book <laughs> let's do it get david lynch in there let's go uh she starts at one point the stereo comes on playing that song really loudly downstairs oh, yeah and she gets these texts in all caps saying come down from her husband's phone number don't be afraid that shit is the most afraid i would be 
God, that was so scary. It's so scary. scary. The all caps, like, calm down, don't be afraid. That's when she sees his ass outside, though. Yeah, that's that ass. It literally is then who was phone. Mm -hmm. Like, my my husband's been dead since last week. Then who was phone? (laughs) This movie's just an elevated creepypasta. (laughs) Never forget this ass. The texts, of course, aren't on her husband's phone yeah, the next morning she when she through, checks like, it. Yeah, goes through, like, the evidence box. Yeah, it's in the car uh, evidence. But while she's going through the phone, she notices a picture of her at a bookstore. But wait a minute. Is then it who her? was bookstore? <laughs> God damn it, She Chelsea. was never there. She doesn't remember ever doing this. Is that, like, a weird angle? This like, kind of behind me. her? Like, here's, this is this good the thing stuff. is, like, this first, the first, like, two-thirds genuinely sets up some things that I think are so fucking scary. Like, mm-hmm. like okay, we skipped right over. I wanted, I literally said we were going to go back to it, and then I forgot because we were talking about House of Leaves and Ass. <laughs> <laughs> that tends to happen. We, so the scene where that, that woman comes in complaining that her kid has got like a C in her class. Like right before this lady comes in, she's at her laptop in her oh, classroom yeah. and she's looking at houses on Zillow because she's like, I understandably wants to get out of this house that her husband built and, you know, killed, her, killed himself in. It is a cool house, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, so she's looking at some cheap houses on Zillow. They're like 200K. I don't yeah. know. Where, I think this is in New York. Maybe that's like what it's. Yeah, because she goes Cause she to a bookstore later. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So she nods off, and then she's she wakes up again because this lady kind of walks into her classroom and is like, "Hi, excuse me." And then when she kind of is startled awake and looks at her computer, and there's guns on the computer that it's like a shopping page for guns, and she just slams the like she closes the window, and yeah. it's 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 so creepy that honestly, as much as uh, when I was reading reddit threads or or reviews of this movie a lot of people were talking about the scene where she falls asleep in her friend's lap is the scariest and the one with like the girls running off the uh but i think underrated really scary scene is the the shot of the laptop where there's gun inside of the houses she was like it just really creeped me out it was creepy there's also a really good jump scare um when she's looking at the boat Outside her house that her husband oh, killed and himself the in. And there's a gunshot that she hears. Yeah. Uh, that her neighbor later says, like, wasn't him. It yeah. Was, it, but, like, that that's a very jarring one. But, yeah, great good scares in here. It's just that reveal really unsettled me. And there's a mm-hmm. lot of really unsettling things and imagery in, like, this first, like, the majority of the movie up until we start explaining things. Like, the, I don't remember this picture of me is fucking scary. Uh, even just going through her husband's computer and finding pictures of other women that look like like her is fucking scary. That's a great payoff to that first picture. Then like searching the file path on his computer and finding he has a whole fucking folder of all these women who are like kind of doppelgangers of her. That's creepy. We haven't even talked about the the night house itself, really. Uh, Well, that's because the night house isn't, in the, that much of the night house. Yeah, that's true. The reverse house. Yeah. I thought that was from the trailers because you said you hadn't watched the trailer. I, I, I saw the trailer once and then was like, I'm not going to watch anymore because I, I don't want to be spoiled. But I do remember the awesome shot where she goes to the night house, opens the front door, and the camera pans over to her on the couch and she gets up and now she's not in the front door. Yeah. I remember that from the trailer and that's why I don't watch trailers because like that would have been such a creepy fucking shot I, to the, experience the, for the thing first time. that I'm bummed that was in the trailer and granted it's such cool imagery that it made me really interested in this movie is the negative space person yeah. that then moves. Mm-hmm. Fucking creepy and I wish I hadn't seen it. Hey, want to talk to you about our first sponsor this week, Dad Grass. Have you ever gotten too high? Maybe felt like you were in a house that's a mirror version of your own and there's a scary man made of negative space chasing you? Yeah, it's not great. Weed has amazing benefits, but the risk of psychoactive side effects can be really scary. And if this sounds familiar, dad grass is an amazing solution. Dad grass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that's really low in THC and high in CBD. That means you get all the great benefits of weed without getting stoned. It's super mellow. I love it. 
The nights here are starting to get warmer, and while I love the warmer weather, for me, that always spells sleep trouble. I can't sleep when it's warm out. Daggrass helps a ton on the nights where I'm tossing and turning and just can't get to sleep. The best is that it's super accessible. Daggrass is federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door. Right now, Daggrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash deadmeat. Go to dadgrass.com Daggrass.com slash dead meat for 20% off your first order. One more time, that's daggrass.com slash dead meat. Our next sponsor this week is Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. There are a ton to choose from, which is great for someone like me who has a wide variety of weird little hobbies. Nancy Cartwright's voice acting lessons have been amazing, like just invaluable as I continue my voice acting journey. I guess less hobby than like thing I actually want to do. And I can't wait to check out Phil Ivey's poker classes. I love poker. James loves poker. We have poker nights all the time at our place. We can't get enough of it. I actually hope one day to be good enough to play poker with poker champion and horror legend Jennifer Tilly. It's on the vision board and a poker masterclass definitely can't hurt. You can access Masterclass on your phone, web, or smart TV, and you can access them in any order you like. They also include downloadable lesson recaps and supplemental materials. Get unlimited access to every Masterclass. As a Dead Meat listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash deadmeat now. That's masterclass.com slash deadmeat for 15% off Masterclass. Our last sponsor this week is Fume. Quitting smoking sucks. I've never been a smoker, but I know so many people who've tried to quit or have quit, and it sounds miserable. One of the biggest obstacles is the oral fixation that comes with cigarette addiction and feeling like you've got to always have something in your mouth. Fume is a natural inhaler designed for a better, safer, and natural way to quit cigarettes. No smoke, no vape, no nicotine. It's a wooden tube you put cores inside that are infused with plant oils like peppermint to simulate a menthol cigarette feeling, or they have flavors like lemonberry bliss for something sweeter. I'll be 100% honest, Fume was kind of enough to send me one and I totally forgot when it came in the mail that it was a tool for helping smokers quit. I sat there playing Crusader Kings just inhaling this peppermint core for a while and it felt really really nice <laughs> especially because my allergies right now are so awful. It felt so good. It's not what it's for but it really is gentle on your respiratory system. If you're a smoker or ex-smoker who still struggles with cravings, Fume is here to help make it easier. Right now, if you head to breathefume.com slash deadmeat and use promo code deadmeat, you are going to save 10% off your entire order. That's 10% off your entire order when you head to B-R-E-A-T-H-E-F-U-M.com slash deadmeat and use code deadmeat. He also, so, okay, she's fine. A lot of stuff that this dude left behind. He had a very textured life. That's one uh, complaint I've seen is like, how did he have all the time to do this shit? Fair. I that we'll, I'm not we'll, gonna get bothered. We'll get by into it, but. my my biggest issues with ultimately what why he did what he did, like what his secret life was. Cause uh-huh. I'm like, I just have questions. Yeah. And granted, I, I've said this before. I don't like to look at movies like that where it's like, well, um, how does he have the time between his job and it's like, I don't care. I don't care. But also (laughs) some things are just distracting and I can't stop thinking about them. So aside from the book with the blueprints of this fucking uh, puzzle house that he is designing pretty much uh, and all of his uh, occult books and the statue of this lady getting stabbed by a bunch of poles. He also left a he left a suicide note that mm-hmm. just says, "You were right. There is nothing. Nothing is after you. You are safe now. Yes, you are safe now. Very cryptic. 
very cryptic and, and cool. creepy. She reads it to her friends at the bar. Good. Again, the sound editing in this movie is real good. This editing and design. I always forget what the difference is. Yeah. It's Oscar season, and I still, every um, year I every have year to look up what is the difference between editing sound mixing and, and sound design. Yeah. <laughs> but when they're at the bar, there's like music playing in the background. And when she starts to read the suicide note, all the sound drops out, mm. except for her voice. And it's really creepy. Like yeah, it. and she says that she doesn't know what it means to her friends, but then she comes home with her, her friend Claire and tells her, no, I do kind of have some idea of what it means uh, because apparently she had died at one point in the past. She was in an accident and was, like, legally dead for four minutes and then was brought back, resuscitated, and uh, she told her husband that, like, there was nothing there because everyone would, would everyone always ask her, like, oh, did you like, see anything? You see? It's like, no, there was nothing there. She would tell other people she didn't remember, but she would tell her husband there's nothing there. And uh, I think that, I mean, that's like a, a focal point of this movie. It's really like a, a very important part of this movie. Her experiencing that and her telling her husband that, who then doesn't want to believe it. Just remember, like, she specifically says there's nothing. Yeah. Right? And the, the suicide note is talking about how nothing is after you. There is nothing. Blah, mm. blah, blah. Yes. It's very, put a pin in it, I guess. This is um, when she falls asleep on her friend's yeah, lap. Yeah, because then... she, her friend is kind of, like, petting her hair. And her, I know, I don't know if you noticed, she stops. Mm. And then that's when I was like, something fucked up's going to happen because her friend isn't petting her hair anymore. And I know she's going to wake up and some, I don't know, is there going to be a spooky skeleton petting her hair <laughs> now? What's going on? But no, it's just this horrible noise. It's the loudest jump scare where it's the the stereo and it's all distorted and bad sounding. And it's really neat. Sound design, I pooped myself. Yeah, I wrote JESUS in all caps. In yeah, my I just wrote LOUD NOISE, all caps. And then she goes outside, and this is when she sees these, like, ghost women run yeah, by Yeah, because there's her. a voice that's, like, the door. There's, a, there's like, a guy voice talking to mm -hmm. her that I'm, is her husband's voice, and it tells her, basically, go outside, and there's just women running, and they're all, like, in their underwear, and they they're all like falling jump off, the off cliff. a cliff. <laughs> and then you think they're done and one more comes out. Oh, it's yeah, so that, fucking that's, scary. That spooked me. It's a good good jump scare. It's great. It's good stuff, dude. Yeah. This, she just kind of like materializes and is running. It's yeah. very, very cool. Mm -hmm. So she, she follows them across the water in this boat. And that's when she finds the house that is literally her house, but backwards. Even the address is backwards everything and so she's looking at all the windows and there's all these brunette women there's like her i think she sees her and then sees other women who look like her like the women yeah. from the photographs and, and then, then her she sees husband. her husband like uh yelling at them and like i think uh accosting them yeah uh and that's when she goes inside and then wakes up on the couch and it's yeah. the next day but yeah. uh yeah all very spooky imagery i love this kind of shit um i wish we spent more time in the night house me too i wanted more of the like mirror house so the next day she then walks around the side of the lake that she lives on to see if there is actually something over there and to see if that house is there because was she dreaming what's up everything again it's very ambiguous and weird i do like the whole waking dream feel of this mm -hmm. movie uh and she runs into mel her neighbor who's a very nice man yep uh detroit's, detroit's own. own yeah <laughs> shit what's his name i have the wikipedia up he was in the the original cast of dream girls on broadway he also apparently directed this movie called Gridlocked that uh, okay. looks very interesting. He also directed the movie Glitter, Mariah Carey's Glitter. <laughs> oh, wow. Not That the... guy had to direct Mariah Carey? Dude. R.I.P. him. Two things. One, not the movie I was expecting to find on his Wikipedia acting, let alone he directed it. And two, yeah, Mariah Carey, though. I can't imagine trying to direct Mariah Carey. I I forget if I've told this story before on the podcast. So, okay, I danced growing up. I did, like, competitive dance, ballet camps, all of it. I was constantly, constantly dancing. And so uh, Mariah Carey was in Detroit one year for the Thanksgiving a football game because they always do a big halftime show and she was the halftime show i was one of the dancers in the halftime show there were a bunch of if you watch it on youtube you won't find me there, there's a shit ton of people dancing in it but basically like dance studios around metro detroit sent like a handful of their you know dancers to go represent the studio so i got to go and um 
Terry. Um, I kind of love her because she rode around in a golf cart that someone drove her around in with another assistant um, with a water bottle with champagne in it with a straw that she would lean forward and drink out of. And then she kind of like waved at us from the golf cart. Uh, Also, we rehearsed the night before the game and she was wearing it was either it was either pink or blue. It was like a tracksuit. Decided she didn't like the color and they switched it to the other color. I forget if it was pink than blue, and they're, but they had a whole new costume made for her by the next day. Anyway, those are my Mariah Carey stories. Thank she you. seems, I I would go hang out at her like butterfly mansion or wherever she lives. I don't want to be anywhere near her. <laughs> she, she waved at me, so we're cool. I, yeah, best friends. <laughs> we're best friends. Bondi Curtis Hall is the gentleman's name. Yes, thank you. I, I can't believe out. he made glitter. He also, I think he did one of her music videos, so I think that's, okay. yeah. He's directed a lot of TV, too. Mm. He's, like, done almost as much, I think, basically as much directing as he has acting. Which oh, wow. Is, yeah, his career is really interesting. Anyway, uh, yeah, he tells her... Yeah, he's worried about her. Yeah, he's like, there's not a house over here. Uh, let's come over and have lunch. And honestly, of course, like, I would take up his invitation. He seems really sweet. Yeah, and he is also a widower. Yeah. Mm-hmm, so he's been there. I wanted more of him. I think we got a fine amount of him. Yeah. Yeah. He, I do like their scene together when she, some more, I, I, at this point, I'm like, I don't remember the order of like well, she finds the house. wacky stuff that she. Oh, she. Okay, so she finds the house, but it's like incomplete. It's all boarded up. Yeah. And so this is this is like it. real life. This is yes. so the dream is when she finds the perfect mirror image of her house. But yeah. real life, she goes to that same spot, and there is a um shitty looking. I mean, I'm sure, you know he was in the middle of building it, but this looks. Nasty. Like, if you found this in the woods, you would immediately turn around and go the other direction. I think you called it the Bad Vibes House. Mm hmm. It's very bad vibes. It's just, there's tarp everywhere. Like, if you find somewhere and there's tarp everywhere, it's no no good. Yeah, that's like a Dexter kill zone. Yeah, or or like a Saw movie where there's just tarp Mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, It's real gross looking. Uh, There's. It, it looks all overgrown. That's where been, she finds the doll with the nails Yeah, that's where it. she finds the gross statue. And so, understandably, she she goes to Mel saying, like, okay, but actually, do you know what the fuck is happening? And yeah. he says, mm, okay, I didn't want to mention it because I didn't know if I should, but I did see your husband with a woman on that side of the lake a little while back. It was like a brunette woman but it looked I, like her yeah he, mm-hmm. he said i think he says i thought it was you yeah. at first but um but that's it he's like i didn't you know nothing untoward as far he as he didn't know I about the tell. house but yes uh apparently later in the night her husband owen came to mel's house and was like all drunk and disheveled and said that he had urges but found a way to keep them at bay yeah yeah so that's i think when he's said that i immediately i'm like oh no he's a serial killer oh really yeah. right away i mean <laughs> or like potential serial killer mm-hmm. like either he's killing women or he's having like american psycho style like sexual experiences with women where because an american psycho patrick bateman hires like escorts and sex workers and like goes too far with them and i was thinking it was maybe a that kind of situation mm. No, he's just murdering women. He kills them. I mean, so does Patrick Bateman. Yeah. Or does he? Or does he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so she finds the bookstore that sold the books that her husband had, all these occultist books. Yeah, books and melodies mm-hmm. store. There's a stamp on these books, and it's in Utica. So she drives up there, and she finds an employee there who looks like her. And yeah. that's the woman from the picture on the phone. Uh, this employee is Madeline played by a French actress, uh, Stacy Martin, who I guess was in Nymphomaniac. I've not that seen that That is a hell movie. of a movie to premiere in. Yeah. She's a- <laughs> uh, I guess she was nominated for Danish acting awards for it. Sick. Uh, I've not seen that film, but. <laughs> when she confronts this woman, she's like, look, your husband came in here. He was nice. Nothing weird. Like, we weren't fucking or anything. Mm-hmm. The lady protests too much, I think. <laughs> but I, I don't think they... They fucked, I think. No. Because she she kind of comes clean about it later. But at first, she's like, no, it wasn't romantic at all. He just shopped here sometimes. And yeah. That's it. But <laughs> uh, when later that night, when uh, Beth is back at her house, 
this woman from the bookstore shows up and is like, so I had a weird nap where I had a dream I was you and there was something chasing me. Let me come clean about actually what I was up to with your husband. And she basically basically tells her we went on a couple dates and we flirted and he took me back here to your house. Uh, and then he went and showed me the house that he was building and they started kissing and then he went and started like strangling her and she freaked out, made him stop and drove home. Because yeah. I mean, we're about there where it gets to, you know, this final act because Madeline leaves mm -hmm. and uh, I think, so somehow Beth goes back to that house. Yeah, she like walks, it's across the lake. So she, she walks. walks across the lake? Well, she walks around the lake. <laughs> she gets really drunk and then walks there, I think. Okay. And finds bodies underneath the yeah, floorboard. Yeah, a board gives way mm -hmm. and, oh, there's bodies in yeah. there. What's weird is literally a few weeks ago, I was like, you know, because sometimes I entertain like, oh, if I made a horror movie, what would I make a horror movie about? Oh, that's it? right. Yeah. You I literally was thinking about it'd be cool to make a, a Bluebeard horror movie, um, which Bluebeard is this fairy tale where... It, it differs depending on what version, but the basic gist is like a woman marries I th usually a king and finds all of his dead wives in like a closet or a trunk or whatever. And so the name, I don't know if you watch, if any of you watch, obviously people watch you on Netflix, but there was an episode of that that's like Bluebeard's Castle, I think is what it's called. Oh. So, cause he's kind of like a Bluebeard, you know, oh, yeah. where you fall in love with him and realize, oh no, he's got literal skeletons in the closet kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then this scene, I'm like, oh man, this is kind of like a Bluebeard a little bit. It's like this, a little bit, your yeah. husband has a secret life kind of thing. That I do think that's an aspect of this that I didn't see touched on quite enough in reviews that I did like and I wish maybe the movie explored more of with in terms of where the ending went. But the idea that it is truly scary knowing that you will never truly know another person mm. or just, you know, like having someone die and then maybe learning things about them retroactively that then you have to reevaluate your own grief or how you feel about that person. And if you're allowed to be sad or, do you know, just those complicated feelings of another person's life and how much you'll never, ever truly know what they were going through, what they were thinking. Yeah. Th them as a person is scary. Uh, she takes a shower and get all that dead chick off of her <laughs> yeah makes sense having herself a good little shower cry and uh then the the spirit thing writes here yeah in the, in the shower door yeah lets her know that it's there and then it gets like sexy for a little she bit she starts to almost fuck this ghost i thought she was gonna fuck the ghost i mean they were on like second or third base depending on your interpretation of the bases yeah i don't know i mean i guess that's fair She's that ghost the, humped. the demon was honest and didn't like do a, a sexual assault. Oh, Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Didn't do a Revenge of the Nerds. It was like, no, I'm not your, let's be clear, I'm a demon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that's not, you know, that's not consent if I lie about being your husband's ghost. <laughs> yeah. Cause she's like Owen and it's like, I'm not Owen. No. I saw that, that freaked out a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people cited that as a very scary moment. Uh, I think maybe having watched White Noise, I was kind of... Dude, I think I was primed for I'd this. I'd been earlier en entertaining the idea of like, what if this thing isn't Owen? And then when it happened, I was like, yep, I had that thought. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yes, turns out that this ghost, this uh, with the nice ass is not Owen. It's just using her dead husband's skin to kind of get to her. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so this is the sequence where it's a lot of like, ghost stuff she's seeing her husband kill uh women in her house while she's running around getting dragged around and then it culminates in her finding her husband on the couch by a fire it's like we it's got a christmas, christmas yeah. the, uh, song playing and she's like laying in his lap and the spirit the entity is speaking to her as her husband yeah and this is the exposition dump that as we earlier referenced just spells everything out. Maybe it really does broadly. explain everything, which 
I don't know. Basically, the demon is like, uh, so that time you died for four minutes, I was the the thing you felt. I like, am I am nothing. I am nothing. Capital N nothing. Right. And so let's keep that in mind. This thing is nothing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that immediately recontextualizes the suicide note. Yeah. You are right. There's nothing is there. Nothing is or, there. Nothing is after you. Nothing is after you. So instead of like, there is nothing after you as in like- Lowercase n. Yeah, there's like no existence after you. No, there is capital N, nothing coming after you. Right. Uh, but I have killed myself. You are safe now. Because as nothing explains- uh, <laughs> after she died and was resuscitated, nothing wanted her back. It's Final Destination. Final Destination yeah, style. It's yeah. Final Destination. And to reach her, started whispering into her husband's ear constantly to kill her. And we see that this, like, in a moment that may have happened in the past. Uh, she's laying in his lap and he, like, goes to mm -hmm. almost choke her and she wakes up and he snaps out of it. To prevent himself from killing her... Owen, her husband, found women who looked like her, uh, built this house based on... A reverse on, house that's, uh, like, all confusing and it's... On the inside. It's meant to trap because uh, when she first finds those weird blueprints and stuff, it says, trick it. Don't listen to it. Yeah. So those are clues as to what's happening here. And so her husband, in order to save Beth's life, began bringing women who looked like her into this mirror house, killing them, being like... I did it. And then nothing would be like, that's not bad. That's not her. Caught me again. And that's the thing. That's nothing the says, thing, yeah. It, it tricked me for a while. But then, uh, you know, now Owen's gone and like, I can get it's you just whatever. How many times did it take? <laughs> yeah. It's like, fool me once. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It might, like, it's so many times. And also, Owen. When did you maybe realize, oh, maybe I should just kill myself instead of, like, how many random women that are under the floorboards of this house? It's just, like, come on, this, man. So this doesn't bother. I like making jokes about it. It's very funny. Uh, imagining nothing being like, like all right, again, I'll trust you this time. I, it's been, God damn it. If I had a nickel for every time, it'd be like seven nickels. It's it's the old man stomping poop and Billy Madison. Yeah, it literally, right? it, it, it's poop again. That's nothing when he realizes it's not Beth. <laughs> yeah, I like making jokes about it. I can buy it with magic. You know, he's got this occult stuff going on. He's doing spells. He's got this doll in this mirror house. So, like, whatever. Uh, also, the various interpretations we can get to. Maybe this isn't happening at all. I think it is, though. If I I was thinking about this movie, and I think in a lot of movies, stuff like this is like, no, it's metaphorical and it's not real or it's a drip. But I think, no, I think in like the universe of the movie, this is like ha this happened. Like, I think he did kill a bunch of women. No, he definitely killed a, a bunch of women. I think that that is a fact that is uh, no matter what interpretation you have, Owen killed a bunch of women. Yeah. Uh, I think that the movie is very open ended and up to the viewer to decide whether or not nothing is an actual entity. I see. Or yes. whether she's just. It's, yes, it's a symbolism of her depression and grief. Oh, do you think maybe she's putting the pieces together that like, oh man, my husband was a serial killer and like inventing her own. Kind but of then, a justification for it. But then why would he have a bunch of books that's like must trick the spirit? I think that it could be in, under that interpretation. I think it can be uh, explained by her husband, just mental illness. Yeah, and uh, she just chooses to accept that is real to deal with it chooses to accept that instead of him being a mentally unwell person that who... there literally is a demon yes yeah i like honestly out of any interpretation of the movie i like that the best that yes he killed a bunch of women but and he thought that there is like a demon and she just chooses to go along with that so that she doesn't have to step back and realize like no my husband just out of his own uh motivation and choice and illness did this another darker interpretation that i saw is that she was talking about earlier how she had been the one with 
suicide ideations and was the depressed one and that uh she was able to confide in him and talk to him and that she was worried that she transferred her like depression over to him uh him killing women who look like her could be interpreted as like it's like how we were saying before how when you're with someone who is always depressed and you don't know what to do it's like he was that that depression was transferring to him and like he wanted to kill her to end it but he loved her too much and so was finding women who looked like her to get that those urges out to keep those at bay. Yeah. So that is like a a slight variation on that interpretation. That with that one I don't know how the occult stuff fits in. Yeah. That's interesting. But what I really like about that interpretation, and again, I think that it can be, uh, there's not a right or wrong answer. Uh, I think you can say, oh, this this is a demon or just the representation of death itself, not even like a demon in the you know classical sense, but it's just like the Grim Reaper or just nothingness of death. Uh, but in the, in the final scene, when she is in the boat and she's talking to nothing and she has the gun that her husband killed himself with it's red mm-hmm. everywhere it's like that real and there's like two moons yeah it's real creepy and awesome visually but her, that's when her friend and neighbor find her and they're like swimming out and telling her to stop and we see that it's a bright and shiny day and i feel like that that is like how depressed people see the world even on like bright sunny days it can be for them this like miserable yeah like they live in another existence yeah yeah like yeah for sure i i do like that i just yeah i don't know i i think if i look back at that interpretation of he because because his character he was very um fixated on like no they're there has to be something uh, after after death, right? Like, that's what he believed in. And mm-hmm. I, I do like the idea that in becoming so fixated on that and being so scared of what his wife had gone through that he then just makes nothing lowercase n into nothing capital N and Ooh, is like, yeah. what if the nothing is something? Do you what know? if when she said nothing's there, she was right, but it's because nothing is something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, again, I, 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 I mean, I, 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 what, are you wondering what the filmmaker's intent was? If they intended for it to be open-ended? Because I saw some comments being like, no, I think the movie 100% shows that there is a supernatural element there. And I'm like, you can, if you want to believe that, but I think there's just as much there to interpret it as like, it is symbolic of depression or... Like, I don't think this movie is saying that, yes, a thousand percent in the world of this movie, there is a entity called nothing who has been directing her husband to do this. But then when her friend comes over, she sees, like, the mirror broken and there's, like, stuff everywhere. Like, so what's going that on? Is been, she you just, know, just fucking just, shit up? Yeah, you know, you know Maybe. like, having a I'm, breakdown of some sort. And... Yeah. I'm curious what other people's interpretations of this movie are. Yeah. I do, I think... I'm I'm gonna go with because I like it the best. Like him being a a serial killer who like basically invented this demon, and she then is like, "Well, that demon's definitely real." Then, and she also because like, my husband couldn't be just a right. My husband, killer. yeah. Which that I think is in line with my uh, the, not the knowing th- someone. Yeah, the thread of this movie that I like. Which is not or not believing someone you love could be capable of something bad. So she then is choosing to believe in this whole weird story instead of the truth, which is like, no, your husband just like killed a bunch of women. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that, and that's why like the more I think about this movie, the more I warm up to it. Even though in the moment I was like, oh, really? The sp- it's a spirit. It's not her husband. And <laughs> the it's real just, monster is grief. Yeah, kind it's of just thing. Baba yeah. again. Uh-huh. It's just a metaphor for grief. I think that. Uh, you know, there is that, but I think that the way it's shot and the way it concludes is open-ended enough to where, you know, you can have a little bit of fun analyzing and interpreting it. Yeah. Yeah. I do think the last line, the last two lines is a little on the nose. Yeah. Like Mel looks out at the boat. There's nothing there. Yeah. And there's the kind of silhouette. Yeah. Yeah. He literally says, there's nothing out there. And she says, I know. And then it ends. And I'm like, yeah, a little on the nose, but whatever. Yeah. Bow for it.
a little, little bit of a paranormal activity too, where it's like demon who's just fixated on this one woman who's like, I, God damn it, Katie. <laughs> I will find you. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I, I overall, I like, I like this. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, yeah, talking about it makes me like it more. And like we said, just Rebecca Hall's performance. Yeah, she's so good. So fucking good. All the shades of that character. Oh, so great. Yeah. I love it. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm glad we watched that. Um, we've got a lot more 2021 I know, movies we, to we watch. I know, we fell behind uh, this last year. But mm -hmm. granted, it's like theaters weren't open. So. Yeah, yeah. And there's just, like, a horror movie especially, it just... I want to watch them in a theater, mm -hmm. like, especially if you're like, okay, I only have time to watch this during the day, and then it's just not as, not as scary. Well, now we know the trick of renting a theater for 250 bucks and inviting 28 other people there, so it comes out to like seven bucks a person. Yeah. We just do that a lot. Yeah. That's how we saw Jackass. We did see Jackass Feel good hit of the, the, the year. <sighs> I'm like, that movie, I... I'm just on such a high about it. It was like genuinely was like the happiest little hour and a half I've had in so long. It it was so good. Uh, big recommend if you can if you have the stomach for jackass and uh, my dicks. And so many dicks in that movie. Not as much poop as usual. Mm -hmm. Still a decent amount of throw up. Mm -hmm. But not as much as normal. More taint than any other movie I've seen. A lot of gooch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, all right. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what's next? I want to. I think I want to do a game. Okay. Uh, next episode. I'm not sure what. I'm so concerned. I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> but uh, maybe we're gonna get into my weird era where the games just accidentally are the best ones I've ever done because I've run out of good ideas. Yeah. That just out of necessity, they are super weird and impossible. We'll okay. see what I come up with. Lucy's here. Hey, Lucy. Aw. Come up here. Want to say bye? Oh, get that kitty. All righty. There she is. Yeah. Oh, and Lucy, we going to say bye to people? <laughs> uh, Dead Meat James on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Yeah, and I'm Carebeck, C-R-E-V-E-C-C -E -E on Twitter and Instagram. And you follow up merch, DeadMeatStore.com. Yeah, that's bad. Store's back up, and yeah. Chelsea's been working on new designs for stuff. I have. I'm, I'm kind of redesigning stuff. We're going to add gradually add more things to it. Ooh, we got to get the Lucy the Cat come to new, do no good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh. Um. Anything else? I don't know. I'm just distracted by the cat. I know. Uh, I we're getting new uh sets. I don't. I know if you follow James on social media, you've seen that the kill count set right now is like non-existent. It's weird. a makeshift set in in uh, Zorin's basement. Zorin's garage. Or garage. I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, kill or count basement. set or kill count. The podcast set also getting totally redone. So I'm very excited. It's not going to be too different. It's same same vibes. Yeah, I'm I'm sticking with like the wood paneling. That was like the thing I was really insistent on. Mm -hmm. But basically, it'll help uh, me with camera placement and lights so that I don't have to set up everything every time that we shoot. It's such a pain in the butt. Yeah, it'll be more space, and uh, that'll happen. I think late March. We were saying mm -hmm. we'll, we'll figure it out, but there'll be a, at least a couple more episodes on this set. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be in the same room. Everything's still going to be in our house because mm -hmm. we're homebodies. I don't want to have to drive to work. Nah. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, well, until next time, mm -hmm. I'm James. And that's Lucy. And I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, this is